Welcome back to your English class. Today I will be taking you to a different world where days were meant for sleeping and nights for working. In the story In the Kingdom of Fools written by R.K. Ramanujan, an Indian poet and a great scholar. In the Kingdom of Fools, both the king and the minister were idiots. They didn't want to run things like other kings, so they decided to change night into day and day into night. They ordered that everyone should be awake at night, till their fields and run their businesses. Anyone who disobeyed would be punished with death. The king and the minister were delighted at the success of their project. One day, a guru and his disciple arrived in the city. It was a beautiful city. It was broad daylight, but there was no one around. Everyone was fast asleep. Even the cattle had been taught to sleep by day. The two strangers were amazed by what they saw around them. So they wandered around the town till evening, when suddenly the whole town woke up and went about to do its nightly business. The two men, that is the guru and the disciple, by this time were very hungry. But to their astonishment, they found that everything cost a single doodoo, whether they bought a measure of rice or a bunch of bananas, it cost a doodoo. The guru and his disciples were very delighted. But no sooner the guru realized that this was a kingdom of fools and it wouldn't be a good idea for them to stay there. So he told his disciple, this is no place for us, let's go. But the disciple wouldn't listen to the guru's wisdom. The guru finally gave up and said, Do what you want to do, I am going. And then the guru left the kingdom of fools. The disciple continued to stay on, ate his fill every day. One day, a butler was killed when a wall fell on him while he was sneaking in at a merchant's house. The burglar's brother went to the king and complained against the merchant for having built a weak wall which fell and killed his brother. Brother, the king summoned the merchant and told his minister to investigate the case. The merchant blamed the bricklayer for having built a weak wall. So, the king sent out messengers to bring the bricklayer. They brought the bricklayer, but before the king could order the execution, the poor bricklayer pleaded and said, Please listen to me before you give your orders. And then he continued saying, a dancing girl who was going up and down the street all day with her anklets jingling was responsible for him making the wall weak because he could not keep his eyes or his mind on the wall that he was building. As a result, the bricklayer said that you should call the dancing girl. So, the king called upon the dancing girl. The dancing girl was now an old woman. She came trembling to the court. The dancing girl said that it was the jeweler who did not keep his promise and thus she had to visit him many times. So in this manner, the dancing girl tried to defend herself. On hearing this, the king ordered to get the goldsmith. When the goldsmith was brought, he told that it was because of the rich merchant's order that he could not deliver the jewelry of the dancing girl on, or sorry, in time. Now, 
the king asked the goldsmith as what was the name of the merchant when the goldsmith named the merchant it was none other than the original owner of the house whose wall had fallen finally the king passed that sentence for the rich merchant but he was so thin that he could not fit the stake so the king ordered for a fat man for execution the soldiers caught the disciple who had become fat by eating a lot by this time at this time of need the disciple remembered his guru and prayed for his help the guru saw everything in a vision as he had magic powers so the guru arrived at once to save his disciple who had got himself into such a scrap because of love for food as soon as the guru arrived he scolded his disciple and told him something in a whisper then he went to the king and addressed him by saying put me to the stake first then put my disciple to death after me so when the disciple heard this he understood and began to say you brought me here first put me to death first and not my guru on seeing the situation the king got confused and asked the guru why do you want to die on being asked the guru told that whoever chose the stake first would become the king in the next birth and the second would become the minister as the moment was very very auspicious now both the king and the minister were tempted and chose the stake one by one in this way the guru saved his disciple after the death of the of the king and the minister the people of the kingdom begged the guru and the, and his disciple to be their king and the minister they agreed to it and announced that now the day would be day and night would be night and people could get nothing for a single dudu well students the moral of the story is wisdom is worshiped everywhere whereas foolishness is our greatest enemy with the help of wisdom we can make a difference between right and wrong okay i hope you all must have understood this story